a very warm welcome to all my dear students as well as to the uh, people who are watching this video so i welcome you all uh, and uh, in this video uh, as you know that we are dealing with delhi sultans and in continuation to it i'll talk with the next topic of it that is chieftains and their fortifications as you all must be aware and well acquainted with the term what do we mean by chieftains so chieftains are nothing but the people who used to lead a group of people and their fortifications like their settlements that we are going to talk about so in this video i'll brief about you that how the chieftains used to save themselves from those people who used to um, create a problem in their own areas which were which were headed by them so in this video we are particularly going to talk about that and uh, in addition to it we'll also be looking for the administrations of the khaljis khaljis and pugnas right so in order to understand the entire thing and the concept please watch the video very carefully and do take note of important points so okay so here comes the very first slide which talks about the chieftains and the fortifications let us move to the details of it uh, i hope that the screen is quite clear to all of you that the chieftains and the fortifications as you know when we talk about chieftains and when we talk about their fortifications so uh, when we talk about them actually large parts of the subcontinent still remained outside the control of the delhi sultans because you already know that it was very difficult because of network issues because of communication gap because of hindrances from the nearby kingdoms or um, invasions from the nearby kingdom uh, the rulers were was were unable to control it very effectively so it really took a lot of Uh, effort in order to control those areas which were not the part of the subcontinent but they were quite at uh, they were uh, they were placed at quite far locations right so that is why so you know that it was difficult to control the um, the areas which were uh, uh, especially you know, which were located at distance places and the other like you know when we talk about the large parts so definitely we are talking about the distant provinces like bengal okay and uh, the other areas okay so now you know that even uh, the people who used to control those areas and the gangetic plains and the sultans even they could not penetrate over them It means they could not even interfere or they could not even go to that places because the reason is because of the forested areas right because um, the gangetic plains wherever there was a, uh, uh, there was a plain and they used to have a large forested areas because of which the movement was very difficult so it was uh, not possible to get uh, get it there and uh, do any kind of uh, any kind of uh, other activities which were not convenient for them right so that was the one of the things uh, that is how we can say that nature has protected on the other hand when we talk about the local chieftains yes they were also they also used those forested areas but for their own purposes now you know that how the chieftains used to fortify themselves or how they used to protect themselves so this is not very tough question because uh, uh, even uh, in or uh, in uh, order to explain this thing an ex an excerpt is also given in our book in which i think ibn batuta who was i hope everybody knows who is ibn batuta he was a tra um, traveler from morocco um, in africa right so he was from there and he used to describe the things that when he visited india how he noticed that how the chieftains used to protect themselves used to fortify themselves so let us look into this onto this next next slide okay so he see how he explains he explains actually the uh, uh, the chieftains used to fortify themselves fortify why they used why they need to fortify because of the invasions of the nearby ruler uh, rulers or the kings so that is why they used to fortify themselves uh, and how they used to fortify they used to hide themselves within the rocks 
uh, or the mountains or even at the at the places which were rugged places which were not very convenient to walk so actually in the lap of nature they were well combined and they used to hide themselves because it was really hard and if, uh, it was really hard to uh, to cross those uh, places uh, where they have hided themselves right and you know that uh, they also used to cover themselves uh, uh, through the bamboo grooves like they used to come uh, they used to uh, make a kind of wall uh, around them with the bamboo grooves and then they used to uh, hide themselves between uh, inside that so that was actually you know, one of the most uh, one of the most comfortable ways for them to hide in because you know that even the bamboo groups were very very uh, hard and it was not uh, even they they could not be penetrated or they could not be uh, subdued without the powerful army so you must have uh, good weapons in order to in order to subdue them right so in this sense they uh, in the sense that they could not be subdued with the powerful armies and that is why the, this is the way in which through which how they used to protect themselves uh, so i hope that this is clear so we'll also read uh, we'll also go through about the sultan's uh, respond or the respond towards the mongols i hope everybody knows what is uh, who are mongols so in this we are going to talk about the mongol attack first of all let us understand that who were mongols so mongols were uh, uh, were the uh, tribes were first of all this entire tribe was led by chungiz khan so we have different pronunciations you can even see that it is uh, genghis khan but it is often known it is often pronounced as chungiz khan so it was a small tribe of mongolia from china uh, which was under the control of Chinggis Khan at that point of time, but then, uh, uh, as soon as he gained control over that entire tribe, he tries to uh, control the other uh, uh, nearby areas of his tribe, and then after that, Mongol group has become very, very powerful and eminent in in order to be considered as an empire, and they were completely in invasions and they have invaded many parts of india and they have turned from a small tribe to an empire and it was possible under the able leadership of changes khan who was the leader of that particular tribe and who has also played a great role in converting that tribe into the empire so the so he he was one of the person who is responsible for that um, and you know that the, the under the they also wanted to try they also want to gain control over the delhi and the areas nearby it so basically under the able uh, leadership of delhi sultanate uh, and during the ruling period of alauddin khalji and mohammed bin tughlaq um, they have also attacked but let us see how these two sultans have dealt in that way and this will also somewhere going to define the administration strategies that were practiced by both the Alauddin Khilji and the Muhammad bin Tughlaqs. So let us look at it. Okay, so uh, we are going to talk in that. I'm really sorry. So this is you can see this is uh, this chart shows somewhere a comparative study between the administration of Alauddin Khilji on Muhammad bin Tughlaq. So in this video we are going to talk about this also. You know that what did he did in order to protect himself from the Mongol Mongols or from the attack of Transoxiana? Uh, he actually Alauddin Khilji adopted defensive measures like instead of uh, directly. Uh, attacking to the to them uh, on them he tried to defend himself and as well as his entire em empire um, that was made by him so actually he adopted the defensive measures in order to protect himself whereas when we see 
the measures of Muhammad bin Tughlaq, it was like he increased the large standing army to attack on. Attack on somewhat, it is just opposite or opposite of defensive measure. So he did not protect it, but he also he he believed on the Newton's third law of motion that we can say that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That means he wanted instead of attack uh, when he he also attacked on them. Okay. So let us, uh, and you know that there were certain other strategies even that were followed. So let us look. And you know that um, as uh, we can see that the chart of the Alauddin Khilji shows that he constructed a new garrison town named Siri for his soldiers, like in order to keep his soldiers protected, in order to um, uh, make him, make his soldiers um, or provide his soldiers a better way of how to deal with the things he constructed a new garrison town in one of the Delhi cities, uh, old cities of Delhi, that is Siri. But what did uh, Muhammad bin Tughlaq did? Muhammad Tughlaq has instead of uh, constructing a new garrison town, he evacuated the old cities of Delhi Kona, but with no plans because you know that when you evacuate, evacuate a certain area, where are you going to shift to the large set of people? You, you may think of the other set of people who can newly accommodate in that evacuated area, but have you ever thought that where will you, uh, where will you actually, um, how are you going to actually provide the space to the people uh, who are uh, evacuated from that place? So he was actually, uh, has not, I think, has not implement, uh, has not thought over it. But instead of uh, constructing a new garrison town, he evacuated the old cities of Delhi and gave that area to the soldiers. But the residents of old Delhi was were relocated into the very congested place that is the new capital that was Dolatabad. Okay. Moving on to the next point, uh, as we can see that the administrative measures of Alauddin Khilji, somewhat he is dealing with mind, somewhat he is leading, um, he is uh, taking, a, I think he is taking a better decisions as compared to the other one. Because you know that, uh, you know, we can see that soldiers were fed from the taxes collected, very true, because we know, we if we remember circle of justice, if we remember the tax pattern, the tax policy, we know that taxes are collected in order to feed the soldiers and in order to maintain the entire empire. So that was done by Alauddin Khilji. And you know that tax was fixed of 50% of the produce. That was one of the type of taxes it was mentioned. And what about the other one? Uh, let us see that instead of levying the uh, taxes to feed the army and to meet the need of the large people, apart from the taxes which were fixed, he also charged the additional taxes. Like apart from a certain sum of money, he is also demanding or he is also over pressurizing people for pay more number of for, for pay more money, which was actually not possible, and definitely the people would not like it because if I am earning for example, if I'm earning 100 rupees and I need to pay 70 rupees of the taxes, how will I'm going, how will I manage for my own needs and how will I manage for my family needs? So instead of thinking, uh, instead of giving it a second thought, he additionally imposed the taxes, which was um, somewhere was not correct decision by him. Okay, so just sorry. Now, you can also see that he paid his soldiers in cash who allowed the Khilji instead of in kind because we already are through with barter system where goods are given in place of goods. So he used to pay his soldiers in cash. Kind means when you are not giving money but you are giving any commodities. That is how barter system exists, right? So prices were carefully monitored and merchant did not sell at more than the price which was uh, prescribed otherwise they'll be punished but you know that uh, they were also paid this uh, when we talk about Tughlaqs Tughlaq also paid the soldiers in cash but he never controlled the prices that means anyone can charge any amount of money uh, and there was no action which was taken against him and again the people will be people will definitely revolt because ultimately 
the king should work for their for their for their welfare and not in order to exploit them right so on the other hand let me talk about token currency so token currency was something which was introduced introduced means it was introduced it was brought in wherein uh, the metals or the paper currency were used but you know that this was even not successful because uh, they can uh, they can generate the false currency and again the token currency was one of the bad idea that was uh, considered by the Muhammad bin Tukla, right? Moving on to the next point and probably the last point, right? So administrative measures of Alauddin Khilji as we think and as we know that he somewhere instead of being hyperactive and responding to the things into a same way he has thought it differently. He gave it a second thought and he formulated the policies very efficiently and tried to implement it in the best possible way. That is why uh, his measures, uh, which were whatever it was adopted by him, was quite successful as compared to when we talk about allowed the uh, Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Uh, I think his. Uh, token currency was a failure, evacuating people from Siri and then shifting them to Dalitabad without knowing that how the people are going to be managed uh, from a densely populated area to a very small area, people will definitely face a lot of problem because they have to shift entire their livelihood for that. So that was actually not very practical approach. Then when we talk about the introduction of token currency, then additional taxes. So somewhat these measures were somewhere not being um, given a priority. We cannot say a priority, but then we can say that uh, not, uh, not people were not supporting these policies and this was somewhere not very uh, good for the people because they used to pay more of their income as taxes. So somewhat it, it was leading to the losses and somewhat it was bringing uh, failures, not any kind of success. So I think um, the, and I hope that you also think the same, that Alauddin Khalji's policies which was much better, was much uh, practical as compared to Mohammed bin Tughlaq policy. So that's all for the video today. And I hope that you must have understood the entire topic. Uh, if any confusion, uh, you can revert back by writing in the comment section. And thank you so much.